Everyone, guess what? Today we have a new guest, and today we're talking about a new show. Well, not a, by no means a new show, Mm-mm. but a show I have not yet discussed. And we're talking mm-hmm. about Project Runway with Caitlin Marshall. Thank you I've for been having on, me. I've been on yours twice, three, yeah. twice, twice. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't checked me out over there on that episode, check it out. And then also just check out her pod, uh, Besties by Bravo. Yeah. Right? Yes. Thank you for having me join. I had so much fun when you were on mine and, you know, you and I could sit and chat for hours. And so it's, we're going to do that today. We're going to do that today. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So can you give me a little of your history on Project Runway? Like when did you get into it? Have you remained into it the whole time? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I will preface this. I I'm going to do my best not to be as incredibly biased as I am because I I have personal ties to it. (laughs) Yes, she does. I do. Um, I, man, I don't want to, I'm not going to say how old I was when it was what (laughs) 2000. (laughs) No one needs to know that. It was 2006, I believe, when uh, Kane, Jonathan Kane, who that's the name of his line, uh, Kane used to be my pageant gown designer. Yes, friends. I did beauty pageants. Okay. It was a long time ago. And it was before we knew about Rachel Levis. Um, and Kane was my gown designer and I, I was one of his models again, it was a long time ago. So don't judge me too harshly. Um, and I really got into project runway kind of like right before he went on, I knew he had tried out and this was all in Norman, Oklahoma. So Believe me when I say it was like a huge thing to be like, oh my totally. God, I know someone on TV. Oh, um, totally. Yeah. And so I, I was really, he made it to the top, we'll say top five, because um, it does crack me up how he does kind of still speak in pageant talk <laughs> whenever he says, I made top five. And <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I've known Kane since I was about 15 or 16. And wow. Um, yeah. He's a wonderful person. I'm telling you. Listen, he is exactly who you see on TV. He is that sweet. He is that funny that it, he just is very holy himself. Um, I did fall off of Project Runway for like a few seasons there. Um, you know, because I, I was in LA and I was like, I'm not paying for cable. Thank you very That's much. That's the thing. That was before fake people. That, okay. Streaming wasn't always what it used to be. No, not at all. Streaming was not always like basically c- cable. Right. Like now, it, you, now you have access to any show you ever could want. But for a while, if you didn't have cable, you missed so many shows because not every network had streaming. Right. So like MTV totally fell off of MTV, the challenge. But then when I got like Paramount Plus, I was like, wait a minute, I loved this show. Why did I stop watching? Well, because you did the math. Uh You know, I've not gone into Siesta Key, but everyone says, no, this this is what I say. People say this to me. If you have nothing else to watch, you'll like it. Yeah, I think you would. I I still no. Nah, I think you would like it because did okay. you like the hills? No, I, I know okay, it's so blasphemous, but it's like when I know it's fake, I have a hard time caring. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I I would say Siesta Key is very much in the vein of the hills, but I think because now we have social media, it kind of um lifted a different veil just a little bit. And they really started, I, I don't think they're filming anymore. I think the show's done, but mm. um the final season, they actually started breaking the fourth wall a little bit. And oh, I like that. Same. And so that's what's a bummer is like I feel like they were kind of getting some legs under them. I, I don't know, I could be wrong. They may come back. Who knows? But we're here to talk about Project Runway. We're here to talk about, but I also fell <laughs> off for many years based on that mm-hmm. too. And so when I went to I wanted to refresh because if we're going to have all these people back, I'm like, I want to remind yeah. myself who they are. And I was like, damn, I fell off for like seven or eight seasons. Like it's there were some contestants that I was like, I don't remember any of these people. Like no. not even – and I didn't – because it would have taken way too long for me to go through every episode of every season. So what I would do is I'd get to a new season and I would skip to either either the – because they used to do the first three seasons – they did the reunion before the final show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was a very Gosh. cool and interesting vibe. But then they yeah. realized logistically that was like probably ri- – because I, I, in my head, I'm like, now when the hell did they film this? That would have been extra mu- – like they got smart and now they film it after everything is over. But mm. the reunions I would watch and like the finale, finale episodes. And it was so bizarre how – Season after season, I was like, no clue who you people are. Like, don't even kind of remember. 
Well, see, for me, it was like, I don't know. I know you from somewhere. That's really where I was Uh. at with a lot of them. I was surprised by how many people I did remember. I think that's the thing with all stars too, though, is they try and go with, I think some of the most unforgettable people that's, Um, yeah, you know, I God, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. How do you feel about Christian hosting? So I just got done. I just got done watching all of the Tim Gunn fabulousness and Unfortunately, no one else can be Tim Gunn. That's what made him so like I every every episode I was watching, I'd be like, how does he do this? Like he manages to come from such a genuine place of love mm-hmm. and care and concern. He's not mean no. ever. He's only concerned. Yeah. <laughs> concerned and he's and he's all usually right. And I I thought he was so special and then was. Christian as a person Christian is so fab but he's just not the same no he, and he I have help, issues but, like, he's kind spice. of bitchy that's exactly what I was about to say he can't help but spice it with a little bit of bitchiness <laughs> and it's like that's not what Tim Gunn did and it's I no. guess they're not going for what Tim Gunn did clearly it's, it's yeah. Tim Gunn you can't replace it but I do think he is He's a, like, I don't know, it was a really bold choice to have someone so young to mentor these people and the dynamic now with the contestants that didn't have K- Tim Gunn and just Christian, there's such a bond right. with those later contestants compared to the veterans, the returning. It's, I'm glad it's that different. they pointed it out in this last episode because I was like, okay. oh yeah. I can see it too. I absolutely see it. there's a bit of a favoritism. They're more like they're babies. The exactly. contestants that were from 17 through 19, it's like, oh, we loved you guys. We know you little cutie patooties. Mm-hmm. As where the veterans are like, okay. Right. I'm well, sure they don't with, love Christian. Right. And with Remy, like, I mean, being, can you imagine that? Like, I feel like that's, oh God, that's something that would definitely happen to me. Like I, I would have been <laughs> like the runner up and then the winner would somehow become like in that position with me. And I'd be like, like, oh, damn it. Yep. <laughs> like, a hundred percent. And Rami is not, he has like no sense of humor either. So it's like, he doesn't know, know. he doesn't know how to like laugh at the situation. He's so serious. He is. Everything is so serious as hell. Deep. Oh my god, he's the <laughs> deepest. Like he is the de- Okay, well let's go let's go through yes. the contestants cuz I want to see like if you have cuz I have I have a connection as well which I'm Do you? cracking up more and more as I watch it. It's not as not as deep as yours by any means, but Laurence uh <sighs> is okay, I know. So when I worked when I was still in the restaurant business, uh-huh. I worked at a restaurant with Laurence's very good friend. She actually Chill. was in Laurence's season. She came to the finale episode. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but there was a beautiful black woman with gorgeous, curly, dyed hair that was just like a mane of, of that was my, that was who I worked with. Oh my gosh. And so Laurence was brought in to bartend because she just needed some money at Extra, the time. Yeah. And she <laughs> talked about her experience on Project Runway, and she's just like she is on the show, like really hard to crack, but not mean, just she Stoic. has been through it, and you don't, as Nina said, you see this personality a lot in design. Like, I liked when Nina mm-hmm. was like, this isn't, I get, I get we don't like it, but she's like, I've been around forever, and that's kind of how designers are. Like, they can kind of just be, but she said something mm-hmm. interesting. She said that on her season- and this happens on Top Chef all the time, mm. where someone who maybe deserves to be in the bottom won't be in the bottom because they bring good drama. There you go. And it's the, at the end of the day, they are making a show. And so she mm-hmm. said that, you know, a lot of us who were really good just didn't get a ton of camera time because we were just working as where there were people who were like nightmares <laughs> to deal with. And they got all kinds of attention and they really didn't get the bottom or critiqued mm-hmm. the way they should because there is a conversation that happens. Like Top Chef is mm. really bad for it. I like I can't even watch Top Chef anymore because I'm like, guys, this is like a joke. Okay. You mm. know who should be in the goddamn bottom and you're not voting them off because they bring drama. It makes me so mad. Well, it, it takes away the element of realness. And that's something you and I were kind of chatting about before was that I feel like Project Runway tends to be the great British baking show of Bravo because it's that the drama is typically 
within those challenges because my feeble little brain could not imagine ever I sew a button on straight. Are you kidding? What they I come can't up with. even understand it. It's bizarre. Their brains like aliens and aliens. It's, it's incredible. I just, it's, I don't think that there are many designers that are currently successful that could go on Project Runway. Totally. And do what they're doing. Like you can't bring Eddie Slimane and bring him on there. You know, you can't, that, that's not, I don't even think our guest judge, I just forgot his name flew out of my head um, from the last episode. I don't think you could put him in to do these challenges and do what these designers do. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not normal. It's, it's very great. specific. Yes. It's like, it's, if you want the, if you want the, prize that comes with the competition reality show, it's not going to be like the real world. It's no. going to be ridiculous. You're yep. going to be making shit out of toys. Like it's, I mean, and that's why Laurence really disappointed me in that challenge. Cause I was like, well, that's yeah. what this is. You're, you're signing up to do this mm -hmm. and it's not just what you want to do. It's what, that's what makes it. It's such an interesting, it's, it doesn't make you the best designer in the world. It makes no. you the best project runway designer for go. that season. And I mean, I, yeah, I'm fascinated by her ability to make a like leather jacket. I know. And I, that to me is incredible alone. That, that is not an easy task. And you know, I, that did disappoint me too. I, I kind of, yeah. We, I think we knew like halfway through that episode that it was Nina talking to Laurence when she said, why didn't you at least try? Yeah. She <laughs> was like, girl, I don't want to have to punish you for yeah. this the way I should. She should have gone home in my opinion. And I hate saying that, but like Mila at least cared. Laurence was like, it. I don't even want to do this stupid fucking challenge. Like she literally <laughs> was like, she said, she's like, I don't have to like it. I was right. Like, oh. It's, I guess. I mean, I mean, the thing though about Laurence though, and this is a personality that I, I wish I had more of, <clears throat> there's something that they, they have decided, I don't let everyone in. I don't care what you think about me. And it's like, even Christian was going up to her like a little trepidatious and was like, I'm afraid of you. And I was like, it's kind of power, honestly. Like, I don't have any of that because I'm such a people pleaser. And I'm like, <laughs> I will adjust all my boundaries to fit you. Like, and then I come out of a conversation and I'm like, oh, I hate myself. Like, why did I just do that? As why did I share so much? Why did Laurence I <laughs> won't do that. Laurence is like, I don't care how you think of me. And so she, it's, I, I am, I admire that aspect of her because there is a plate there is a value to that yes I just don't relate to it at all because I'm such an asshole like I'm like <laughs> everyone needs to like me oh please like, God, yeah out. I I am I listen I I completely and totally empathize because I am absolutely <laughs> the same way I, I mean you and I talk about how it's like we could get 30 great reviews and then there will be one and we're like god damn it that's it I'm done I'm done just I, go home Quit. I retire. Everyone hates me. Like, yeah. I don't, when people say ignore the haters, I'm like, uh, I can't. Excuse me. The haters <laughs> are all that matter to me. And that's a problem. They are so loud. <laughs> um, do you have any other standout favorites besides Kane? Like, were you excited to see anyone come back off the top of your head? Bishmi, I was really excited to see him. I was actually excited to see Kirasan. Um, yeah. She, I mean, I, I, she, I'm interested to see what develops with her throughout Me the too. season. Me too. I, I think she's kind of relearning her design aesthetic, yep. you know? Because she's been like designing costumes. She's been yeah. as, as in the costume department on a show that's very different than just designing from your heart. Yeah. It's what's it called? The Descendants. It's like that. The I Descendants, the Disney show yeah. about the children of, and you know, what's funny is they actually had a challenge on previous, on a previous season with like Tim Gunn. That's how long ago it was <gasps> where they had to design something for the Descendants. It was so meta. That full circle, completely. Full circle. It wasn't Carousel yeah. season, obviously, because Carousel was season one, but it was like season 10 or something. And I was like, yeah. I didn't put it together, but yeah. So it's that's yeah, mm -hmm. wild. I completely mm -hmm. forgot about that one too. I mean, it's the the that's the other thing too is I'm like, how who is sitting back there going, what can we make these designers do? Oh, I know <laughs> the challenge. Is, it's, I think that on the on the challenge on MTV is the challenge all the time because they come up with the most insane like fucked up stuff for them to do. Not just like scary stuff, but just like silly things. Like you're gonna be strapped to each other. Like, like in a 69 position and you're going to go through this obstacle course. I'm like, I'd sick fuck thought of this. They have to be like using military type of style, like 
training? And then how can we really fuck with them even more? And then how can we make it so silly and embarrassing, but they like, they get so, they get so into it because they just want to win. And it's like so, so silly. How could you do this to me? Question mark. I know I am a broken record, but I don't care. Kitsch products are designed to prevent aging, damage, wrinkles, breakage. It's the ultimate preventative beauty regime. Whatever your budget is, whatever your skin type, your hair type, Kitsch is all about little indulgences at affordable prices, morning, noon, and night. They started in 2010 by selling hair ties door to door, literally just hustling. Kitsch is self-funded, female founded, and now they are carried in over 20,000 retail locations. We love it. The beauty essentials that I cannot live without will be the satin pillowcases. They also make caps and eye masks and satin is vegan and cruelty free. I did not realize that silk was not vegan because it came from silk worms. Oh my God, the heatless satin curling rollers. Say goodbye to heat damage. These are the original, the OG, and still the best heatless curlers. Do not settle for knockoffs. Get the ones that started the whole craze. Kitsch also has rice water shampoo bars. These help with overall hair growth and density. And then they have rosemary scalp oil. This is essential to support scalp health and hair strength from root to tip. I have a Kitsch hair tie in my hair right here. Don't ever use any other hair ties. It causes damage and breakage. I only have the pillowcases. That's all I use as pillowcases. You will never see a non-satin pillowcase on my bed. Because when I found out that when you sleep, you can cause wrinkles, I said, not anymore. Right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash she speaks. That is right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash she speaks. One more time, mykitsch.com slash she speaks for 30% off your entire order. I love that. <laughs> Anyone else that you were excited about? Or- uh, Corto. I'm saying her name incorrectly. Um, Coteau. I, know I, I had I had to Coteau. practice that over and over again. Coteau. Yes, thank you. Um, oh God, God bless Anna. My God. Um, <laughs> I actually have like an issue. I'm like Anna is mean. She's bitchy. She's, she's, she's postpartum. Too, she's fully. oh, is that what it is? The, I mean, she was like that on her season too. She was. She was. And then I think it's like even worse. I don't know what she was thinking coming. But she's I like all oh, conky and like in full of her. I just like I Anna gets on my gut. She's the person that they hire. They bring her on just because she's drama. I'm telling you, yep. it's not like mm-hmm. she can't handle it. She can't handle any challenge. Not, I mean, she, she is on my nerves. <laughs> she, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm almost just going through everyone in my head. Um, Jean Baptiste, I thought he, listen, I like his aesthetic too. I think, um, he's really, I mean, really pretty much everyone. I, I was for the most part, pretty excited to see, um, you know, it's all stars. They, they Do you mean bring... Praje? Oh yeah. Jean Baptiste. Yeah. Jean Baptiste. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I like him. Yes, I do too. Um, what about, how do you feel about Brittany Allen, the platinum blonde from season 18? So, okay. I, I like her aesthetic. I, so this is what's funny. I wish, like, I love the look of her aesthetic and the things she designs. They are the type of of designs I could never personally wear. They wouldn't look great on my body, but I, I want to, I like looking at them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she's funny. It is interesting. I, I, cause I did forget that she was Christian's, you know, uh, immunity Mm -hmm. safe. And so, there definitely is like a little bit of that favoritism that you're speaking on. Yeah. Um, you know, I like that. I don't mind her. I like that. She'll be like, I like her too. Yeah. She'll, she'll speak her mind and she's, she knows how to be nice while saying, here's where I'm at. Here's my boundary. And I feel like she was really trying to do that with Anna. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I, I, I like her. I think she's hot. I think she's cute. Um, I like her little attitude, but absolutely she's getting favoritism 100%. Cute little no denying white girl. It. No <laughs> denying it. None yeah, at all. She is. 
<laughs> I'm excited to see Fabio back. I think Fabio's mm-hmm. such a sweet soul and like yeah. I love his I love his personal aesthetic. Like I love yeah. he dresses himself like I would imagine like a painter back yeah. in like <laughs> olden times. Yeah, I just, I think he's cool. He's got a cool vibe. Yeah. Um Bishmi also I was super excited and also god his sister just recently passing and what all that turned into. We'll get we'll get into that yeah. cuz it was just so so great. Mhm. I like that Mila is back, but I'm not kidding as soon as she started talking I was like she'll be eliminated soon cuz she's so Absolutely. dull. And she wanted it so badly after, I mm-hmm. think she kind of felt like she fumbled a bit. Yeah, um, she abandoned her line and stuff. I just knew, it was like, this is a bummer because she's not very entertaining. And I could just mm-mm. tell as soon as she started talking, I was like, you're not going to make it far. But I'm happy no. you got a chance. Exactly. Remind people who you are. Rami, I've always thought was like, mm-hmm. I just, I don't enjoy him on my screen because he's <laughs> so serious. And like, that will happen this season already. I'm like, yeah. here we go with the Rami story and the thing and all this yes. stuff. Yes. Um, and I just think he doesn't have any sense of humor, which really comes through in his designs. That's the thing. It's like, because I think yeah. that you to have a sense of humor typically means you can take a little bit more criticism than someone That's who it. doesn't have any. And so he can't take any criticism. And then when he gets on the run, I'm like, oh my God. Okay. It's just, it, it is such a like deep, serious thing with him every time. There, He has no whimsy either. And I think there needs None. to be just a touch when you're doing like high fashion has to have a touch of whimsy. It's just uh-huh. kind of it does. required. I loved Nina when they first gathered together. She got ever so slightly choked up. And that's as choked up as you'll ever see Nina get. She doesn't. Like how fabulous did she look? No, she looks like she's not aged at all. Like when even when they show flashbacks to earlier seasons and then you see immediately her current face, I'm like, there's honestly barely a difference. She's a vampire. She looks fantastic. She goes, she's like, she's like, seeing you all here, it does get me a bit emotional. But then designers, and then just like keeps on moving. Like she doesn't really get emotional. Like that's not Mm -hmm. what you're going to get out of her. And I like, Christian, you could tell us like, do you even know who they are? (laughs) <laughs> he said that when he went on Watch What Happens Live, he's like, Nina yeah. doesn't really know anyone's names. <laughs> and he's like, really? He's like, no. She just, she's done this since the beginning. She's like, I, I don't think that's, not to say like something bad about that, actually. No. Nina, I think Nina has always given them great critiques. They're tough critiques, but also interesting too. And this is so fashion in a nutshell. A lot of the time throughout the years, the designers, the judge, I mean, the judges, they won't disagree a lot. Like yeah. Michael Kors and Nina would totally disagree. And then Heidi would be like, I thought totally opposite. So it's mm-hmm. interesting how they ever judged yes. anything because it would it would have been a tough call a lot of the time because that is just fashion. Where <laughs> yes. I have, I only know what I like looking at. I don't wear fashion. Like it's just not, no. I don't, that's just not my thing. Um, and so I don't pretend to know. No, like and f- technique. And a lot of the time when I don't like something, I'm like, that's hideous. They're like, this is our top design. I'm I like, know. what? I did that this last, oh my God. I was like, do I must, not, I must have no taste. I no, know. I know that I don't know fashion. Cause like when I was doing the rewatch, I was like, well, that's a disaster. And then they'd be like, our number one design is coming out. I'm like, oh, it's that <laughs> one. So I have no clue what I'm looking at. I mean, at, and I have some fashion background. Like I used to work at Saint Laurent, but like, Damn. I mean, it's still like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's sometimes I'm not as forward thinking as you. <laughs> to be yeah because I also like I don't know technique and stuff I that's one of my favorite things that the judges do when they're when they when they ask a question like did you grommet all of that well that's a lot of work I'm like I don't know what any of that means but I I like when they can appreciate like the technique yes of things that I just goes right over my head 100% over my head uh the cha- I like the first challenge I like that they had them take their worst mm-hmm or lowest score design and make it into something fashion forward and fabulous. They could like take that memory away and transform Mm. it. Um, And then of course the, but there's going to be a twist and everyone is so instantly triggered. Right. It's like on Drag Race. Drag Race, they get them to do enough. And so when Rue's like, however, we've got one more thing for you guys to do. I'm like, this is, they go too far. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. I had just got done watching season, I think, 18 of Project Runway. And I had never, I know this is really fucked up to say, I had never seen a full season of Drag Race from start to finish because, again, didn't have cable, didn't, like, just didn't indulge it. 
my God. And then I got sucked in. Someone was like, you have to watch fucking Drag Race. So I yes. started watching Drag Race from the beginning. And I went, let me get this straight. On Project Runway, they have to make one design. And it is pandemonium when there's any kind of like, I don't know, twist of it. Drag Race, they have to learn a dance routine, sing a song, then usually design like two fucking pieces. And do their makeup. And do their makeup, tuck, all of it. So when they add a twist on Drag Race, I'm like, why? You don't need a twist. They're already doing so much. So now after watching Drag Race, when they get all freaked out about a twist i'm like you pussies okay you know nothing <laughs> you, you have no idea what they do on the other show like shut up and suck it up i uh, truly though i because the makeup alone is what would put me under. tell me I, about it takes so long yeah. with the with the glue stick on their eyebrows oh i'm like God. are you glue sticking your eyebrows no you're telling someone else how to paint your ladies faces so get exactly. out of here exactly you're not even doing their hair Yes. So I truly am like, I'm able to watch Project Runway and kind of laugh at them because I'm like, guys. <laughs> I know. Same. But also I'm like, I, I, I could never collapse. even come. I could never come up with even a sketch. I would be. In I don't know position. how <laughs> their brains do it. Like, I don't know how you walk into mood and you're like, this fabric, I'm going to turn into this. No clue. No, I, I could walk around and be like, oh, this one's pretty. This one's pretty. Oh, I don't and like And then that I'd be one. like, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> no, I would just wrap myself up in a toga and call it yes. a day. That's so, I yes, see. they are talented, beautiful, amazing yes. designers. But, like, when I, when I first watched Drag Race, I was like, okay, never mind. This is the number one most difficult competition show. Yeah, it is. Period. Period. No no Absolutely. doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I loved Nor Nora and Karasan working at the same table and having their, like, season one reminiscing. Yeah. I I'm going to I'm going to be honest, I knew from the second they started working that they were not going to be in the top. I could tell I'm like, mm. I felt I I'm happy that she got to come back with a good yeah. attitude and she wasn't all drama and she was like, "Oh well, she looks like she is successful as hell." You she can just is. feel it off of her. Like she is thriving, she's fine. She's just not a designer anymore. No, and it would be, I know that Alicia Silverstone said that, that dress was like a bridesmaid's dress, but I don't, I, I pray to God, I don't know a single person who could be that cruel as a bride to put a bridesmaid. In that dress. Right? It, the color was bridesmaid and then the it was color like, was very bridesmaids, but it's, it was just a very bad dress. Bad, yeah. bad all the way around. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Karison gave, she, Karison, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. She gave Nora the best, like, sob speech about how she wanted to honor her mom and just mm -hmm. wished she had an African-American woman to represent for Barbara by the Sea. And gee, Nora had a plus-size African-American model. Yes, and she's like, you know what? I want to trade with you. And Kara's like, no. No, you wouldn't. I'm like, girl, that gave you that was idea. your plan. I mean, Absolutely. Like, this was her intention. And, and she they did it at one point. Yeah, at one point during the deliberations or the critiques, they even said, maybe if you had had someone with a different skin tone. I was like, guys, Ooh. you know that was just because they switched. And I know they add these things in there. They add these things in there that I know are just because they knew there was drama before and they do like a callback to it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I got to say, Kane, love his freaking out over the horse hair, but letting it right go. He has to let yeah. it go. He has no... But I'm like, why can't they go back to mood? He paid for it. Can someone just go back and get his horse hair? Thank you. And someone else was missing there. Wasn't Nora missing some fabric as well? Was it Nora that was she missing? She said, some? I lost... I thought she said, I lost my calculator. And I didn't get yeah, why that was. was such a... I didn't get... Like, they put this music to when she said that. Like, she's like, maybe next time. But I also they lost my calculator. Phones. And this music was like... Dun, 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 and Kane was like, wow, I really get what's happening now. And I was like, I don't get what she did that was so shady. No, it was losing your calculator because like, we're used to using our phones as a calculator, like uh, down to like the decimals. Oh, is and that little, why? Yeah, like the little centimeters. They and don't whatnot. give them calculators? I guess they do, but she lost it. Oh. That that was my- See, it, That went over my head. I was like, I don't get- My assumption. But 
Okay. I'm not a math person. So that's why I was like, oh shit, the calculator, not the calculator. And I'm like, (laughs) if they don't give them calculators, that's fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. Forget the horse here. Give me the calculator. (laughs) Get calculator. But again, seriously, I was like, why can't anyone, why can't someone from production go drive and get him? But I bet they did like in their mind, I bet that's all covered in the rules. Like Mm -hmm. if you don't come back with it, we cannot go back and get it or something. There's got to be something like that. But I'm like, he paid for it. I was so irritated. I was Someone can go back and get the goddamn horse hair he didn't need it though thank but god but he didn't fucking need it oh my <laughs> god he didn't need it at all but Mm-mm. christian's first walkthrough it was so apparent that the veterans who didn't have him were like what are you doing here yeah but you can't totally deny what he's done honestly it's it's t- like his designs are fantastic he has definitely yes. done amazing things it's just that they had tim gunn and there's something and this is i hate to be an ageist, but there is something to be said about having a mentor that is older than you. Yeah. Um, you know, but that, that being said, would I take a Gen Zer as a mentor for what to do with social media? Totally. Absolutely. So, I mean, there are two, it's, you know, you can spin it either way. Um, it, it's just Christian is, <laughs> he kind of flits around and uh-huh. he's, he kind of will literally pirouette. <laughs> literally (laughs) like like, I mean and so I I mean I do I get it you know but I think they they would be wise to heed more of his advice because he is of that younger I'll say generation um not that you know they're significantly older than him but I mean he does give a lot of value and the way he has helped rise his own star even you know when like Leslie Jones, she was saying, I have no one to dress me. No one will, you know, because she was going, what, like the Emmys or Golden Globes. And he said, "Um, hi, you didn't call me. And he will do that. He did it for like BB Rexa, like all of it. And I love that about him, that he's totally. well-rounded. So that's why it's like, he is a great mentor to have. He has so much value. So much. Might want to just remove some of the bitchy spice. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It's like spice you girl. want, because something that I learned from my decade of restaurant management, mm-hmm. you have to give, you have to know how to speak to people for them to hear your words. Because even if what you're saying is the right thing to say, like, absolutely. That is the take. They need to listen to you. Do that for sure. It's hard to take criticism. It just, it as human nature, it's really not easy to take criticism. It's hard. And when you add a little sass to it, it's like, I'm less inclined to take your criticism. So he just, it's like, it's an age thing, but also it's just, Tim Gunn came from such a unique and special place with the designers. Mm -hmm. He would cry because he loved them so much. Like I kept crying because Tim would cry. Like he cares and loves them all every season at the reunion and by the way he's great at reunion hosting too Mm -hmm. i'm impressed with his reunion hosting abilities he knows how to set boundaries he knows what's right and wrong he doesn't play in the mud too much Mm -mm. he's very 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 gifted at exactly like an authoritative role with compassion he knows exactly when to knock it off but he Mm -hmm. also knows when he just he cares so much he's like mr rogers he is. Oh my God. He is mm-hmm. like, he kind of comes in like designers. It's very Mr. Yeah. Rogers vibes. Yeah. He is. He's like the Mr. Rogers of Project Runway. Make it work. You Make, know, just you know <laughs> totally. <Welcome> to <laughs> and when it matters, he just would show them nothing but care and compassion. He really gave a shit about it being fair. Mm-hmm. Like he really cared about that. Christian doesn't have that heart. He doesn't have that. It's almost like, even though we know that Tim Gunn, I know he identifies as asexual, so I don't want to put that on him that he's a gay man, but, um, he also has some sort of like paternal instinct that Christian's not quite there yet. He's like little brother. (laughs) Yes. He's like, I don't love it. Mm, Sorry. And then he like you walks off. Up. I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> After like saying something too, like even something kind of, he's like, I don't know, figure it out. Like he has like a, he kind of enjoys being a little sassy, and it's like, mm-hmm. I missed him. I, I really do. It I uh, it was a different experience. There's just you know, there's no, there's no getting it back. Rami and Christian them. have such a vibe. Rami is like, get away from mm-hmm. me. I don't want your advice. I don't want to know, you little fucker. You stole my win. <laughs> Sorry, Christian had a way better, way better collection. Like Christian was yeah. the winner. Okay, I, that's the way it Rami. Goes. Sorry, bro. Um, 
But Christian's like, oh my God, I'm so excited for my twist. And the twist is there's no immunity this season. However, God. the prizes will be fantastic. Like this challenge got them $10,000. So that's <sighs> smart because if this happens on All Stars on Drag Race too. Mm-hmm. If you're going to bring back people who are working and thriving, because typically mm-hmm. when you leave Drag Race, that happens. When you leave Project Runway, you are already working. You disrupt your life to do nothing for this entire exactly. chunk of time. And you are sequ- you are sequestered, man. Yeah. You can't talk to anybody. It's intense. Mm-hmm. So they need to make it worthwhile and Absolutely. not just be a punishment almost. Like I just right. lost months of my life doing this exactly. stupid show and I didn't even win. <laughs> so they need to be able to win things along the way. That was Agreed. smart of them to do that. Agreed. You know, the exposure, some might argue is enough, but. No, if no. you already are working like that. And if you've already stars. done Project Runway, you've already got the damn exposure. You're like, I got that part already. I need exactly. money. I need to <laughs> yes. win. We all need those checks. I need money, honey. Mm-hmm. Um, bish me. We, and this was this beautiful thing about reality TV. This was not staged. It was not planned. Mm-hmm. It was just what I think is so amazing about reality TV competition shows yeah. with big casts of talented people. They go, they're all in different phases, and yes. he's so innocent, delicate, mm. precious, angel baby, Sensitive talking and, about his sister, mm. and oh my God. he's not crying. He's just really internal. Oh. Like he's just really experiencing this feeling, and it's so it like a little boy harp. Yep, he now looked like tear up. a oh. little kid. It was so sweet. And beautiful. And then we had to have a whole moment off to the side. I loved it. With the producer. And I he's like, that. I just, I made the dress as she was getting sick. So it's really triggering to work with this design. It's like, I bet. Oh my God. Like I, how yeah. tough. And he, but then he apologizes to the producer. I'm like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, don't, oh my God, the way he apologizes oh. to the producer. And they're like, you do not need to apologize, you sweetheart of a human being. Oh, uh, I know. I, You know what? And that was something that I just was sitting there thinking about it. And his sister, it hadn't even been a full month, I don't think, that she had passed. And so it was just, I think everyone just wanted to collectively scoop him oh, up and him say, hug. sweet baby angel, you don't have to be here. We want yep. you here. We yep. want you to win for you and for her. But oh, and I loved the way that producer handled it with him. It was so human and it it wasn't what we always assume is happening with production and, you know, the way they're speaking with their stars and things like that. It was just so therapized. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it. It was just a human connection and the way he was just hanging his head. Oh, I'm going to like, it makes me tear up. I I know on a, on a less sweet note, as soon as I saw Victor's design with the I liked the legs I thought the legs were cool with the like braces yes. because he, he's basing it off of when he was attacked by a guy with a machete oh my god that story was insane uh, and so he had to recover from that so this was his homage to that yeah. but he had this fabric literally just on top of it and I thought no mm-hmm. that's I can just tell no purpley pink sparkle on top Over of this like, like leather, yeah, and I was like, God, if you had taken that off, it would have been cool. Like if yeah. you had taken it off, I would have been able to focus. But there's so much going on in the legs, and you add this, like it just looked like a piece of fucking fabric. It it literally looked like they actually asked him to. Okay, you are supposed to be inspired by uh, Rome, you know, the gladiators, and um, but make it girly in fashion. And so he yeah. went, well, oh shit, I have some. Sp- Part sparkly pinkish fabric. Yes, I mean you said about the it was machete. like scraps. Him and Julia Fox, and maybe he needed a Birkin to shield himself. Like, did you see that story she told? Wait, the- what? <laughs> I'm sorry, so off subject. You said machete, and my brain went. Um, yes, Julia, because Fo- it's Julia Fox. I mean, what if if it's not absolutely batshit crazy? It's not. It her, doesn't. Right? It's not her exactly. And she was like, um, so I, I just wanted to show you my Birkin where I have like this slice on it it's when I was attacked with a machete at a party and I used my Birkin to shield me I'd have been like to hack my arm off the 
I'll sell the Birkin that'll at least pay for half the surgery. But um, yeah, she shielded herself with a Birkin. She has a slice from a machete. From a machete at a party. <laughs> she at a party. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many follow-up <laughs> questions. So party. many. And she just like, it was like a 60 second video. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's so her. Someone put her on Roni. We just <laughs> do it. please. Yeah. Because actually that as much as that sounds like she'd never do it. Uh, and it's weird. And we kind of, I, I kind of don't like having star stars on reality TV, but she's someone, how has she actually just not had a reality TV deal at this point? Like, how is there not a Julia Fox reality TV where we just follow her around? Like, she would be willing to do anything. And I actually would watch it. Yeah. She, I mean, she pays all those paparazzi to follow her around when she's naked at Trader Joe's uh, why not just there has to be I'm something. sure there, I'm sure I'm not being the most creative person I'm sure some producer has already been like I'm trying I'm trying to get her to do it because I'm telling you I would watch it I would watch I her would getting gas because she's just like what are you gonna wear how are, I need to see what she looks like when she wakes up in the morning I would love to see all this no she's such no. a she's a perfect reality tv person yep. because like what is she exactly? Like, no one really knows. Like, what else should she be doing? But other than to embrace her <laughs> oddness, you know? It, it's just the more the more opportunities she has to open her mouth, the more strange and more yeah. fascinating so let's, it is. Let's get her in, like, a talking head confessional for a whole season just seeing what the fuck she says. Yeah, please. All right. That was a Sorry. good little segment. Yeah. That was a good side yeah. note. We'll, we'll talk offline. We'll get this going. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll get this thing happening. Um, Victor, but here's the bummer, Victor, poor Victor, his model doesn't show up. And this was one of those outfits that had to be so perfectly custom made <laughs> to the, to the models. I felt so bad for him. And Ren doesn't even get fired. Like Ren, Ren is back for another episode. So I was like, damn, okay. That must, must she must've had a valuable re- excuse. Something must have happened. I pray to God. Because Maybe like that- tested positive for COVID. Uh, you know, I wouldn't wish they probably that on have anyone, to do, but, please. but you know what it is? They, when they're filming, they have to take like all shoots are like this now. Yeah. Every day you take a COVID test, like every single day. And I bet they weren't, they didn't want to say on camera. She tested positive for COVID because after being in the room, it sparks everybody to be like, uh oh, you know what I mean? It would look like they were, yeah, because technically they should probably like shut down production or some shit if someone, but they're like, that's a good point. "Uh, She didn't show up. You know what I think? That's because (laughs) you overslept. (laughs) Yeah. Cause she she would, it wouldn't have been dropped like that. That's my guess. I I think that's a very good guess. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Um, Uh Praje had this like, pink rubber Jean-Baptiste. He had this like pink rubber skirt thing. And I was like, I have zero clue what this is. Mm-mm. And I can tell I'm not going to like it. Mm-hmm. And so I was not wrong about that. <laughs> 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 yeah. I feel like he is so hit or miss. Yeah, totally. He, he is, he is a incredible. hit when he hits. Yes, totally. I mean, I think his thing though is just streetwear. He does streetwear so well. I think that he is very much his streetwear is where he shines. And I, I, I think once we, surely they're going to have a streetwear challenge at some point. Yes, I, yes. they have to. I'm, I'm nervous I'm so for, for that. right, like Kane and Rami. I don't think yeah. that's streetwear. Now <laughs> oh, I no. could be speaking too soon, but you know, I've not really seen Duquesne a ton of streetwear. Um, same with Rami. Um. I, I'm not sure who else really, I, I think, uh, Brittany might have a little trouble, but, um, I'm going to assume on not going to make it that far, but anyway, that's where he will shine. That is his. Yeah, totally. Whole thing. Well, even the gown talent, like him and cut him and Kato made, we will get to it. I mean, yes. it was so fucking unbelievable. Right. The show. Okay. So the actual show, I'm sorry. I think that Alicia Silverstone was the funniest, most stoned guest. First of all, what the fuck is she wearing? Oh my God. Okay. Thank you. So how did they let her go on? I'm like, you're judging them. This is a thing I have. And it comes with it. I say this about housewives at reunions that if you're what you try on and you're going to wear, it has to be a sitting down outfit. You need to (laughs) sit down in it. 
It, it may look fantastic while you're standing up and posed, but if you are, you need to sit down in it and take photos of yourself and vid videos of yourself sitting down in whatever it is you're wearing, because they, I don't know why these housewives and why people go on these shows and they sit the entire time in a dress that they were expecting to stand in the other, the entire time. It was a standing up thing because the, the cup on this gingham, I, I, I know if she bent over. Oh my God. She would have been breastfeeding That's the entire all, runway. I kept staring. I couldn't stop staring. I'm like, she's going to have a nip slip. And Absolutely. it just was an unflattering, bad design. I'm like, the you guys didn't dress her? Why would you guys not dress her? You know, anyone uh -huh. judging should look amazing. But once I got past that, I was like, yeah. this is hysterical because she's just – she has no business being there. She's like, if I was judging. So suddenly I was like, this would be like, if she was so, so, okay. <laughs> they get to, they get to the, the actual, they get the, to the actual judging, right? Alicia Silverstone is so stoned, just giving emotional opinions. She's like, like they'd go through the very technical things and then Alicia would be like, it's fun and it feels cool. And I like the ruffles. <laughs> like, I just, yes, say, say nothing that makes any real, like, <laughs> no, nothing that really has any weight to them. They get nothing from it. There's just not benefiting them whatsoever. They're like, thanks, Alicia. She just was such a random person to have <laughs> to begin sense. with. Like, I, I don't know. Why didn't they get someone? Of course, I don't know. This might've been a reach, but Blake Lively, even get Leighton yeah. Easter, get someone from Gossip Girl on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it felt like they were just scraping for anybody they could get. Cynthia Nixon would have even been a great Ooh. pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, she's not as busy as SJP or Kristen Davis, you know, like get one of the girls that at least their show is fashion. I mean, Clueless was a, I, Clueless was my favorite movie of all time up Me until. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, it feels like maybe their PR person or their agent <laughs> or their manager is like, can we get her on Project Runway? And they're like, I guess. <laughs> sure. Maybe top it's chef like, would have been better. It felt like that's what I'm saying. It felt like maybe a favor. It was such a bizarre choice. It was. I agree. But I agreed with Nora going home on this one. I was like, yeah, it's just if this is what you're gonna design, I don't no. get it. At least with <laughs> yeah. Victor. Victor's it was costumey. It looked bizarre, but had he edited properly. But this is where yeah. Brand Brandon is so sweet. The judge Brandon, he is yes. like a teddy bear. I love him so much. Mm -hmm. But he, this is where he gets all technical. He's like, did you cut and grommet all of those? And I'm like, what? But he goes, see, that's impressive. And he says it perfectly about Victor's. He goes, you wanted to give us the whole kit and caboodle. You gave us a cheese board of all your talents. Yeah. And the thing is, the brie, which was the leggings, was the tastiest cheese. And I could have had a whole plate of brie. I mean, I, I love it. put that. it in terms of food. I get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, maybe a little honey with that brie, but yes. Yes. Absolutely. I totally, I totally I agree. It. Um, the final bottom look is Carson's, and everyone was like, what? Oh my God. But it's like, yeah, dude, even, even the OG veteran royalty of the show, they can, they can also fall victim to this. Well, so. it was the dangling of the stuff off the boob. I, the fabric yeah. was gorgeous. <laughs> the fabric but, was gorgeous. The slit was wrong. She yeah. didn't, the slit, I was like, we could see her cooter. Yeah. And you know, a titty doesn't need a chandelier. That's, a that's titty it. doesn't need a chandelier. That's a great line. A titty yeah. doesn't need a chandelier. No. Never, unless you're doing, <laughs> unless it's intentional, like it's tassels. Like Cabaret. You're doing, yeah, but other than that, um, Fabio's gets the final top design spot. And I just, I love him up there with his little bucket hat and his oversized shirt. And it was her, it was her favorite of the night. Hold on, which one was Victor's? This one was, or I'm sorry, Fabio's. Mm -hmm. What was his look? Let me see. Hold I know, on. I was trying to pull up before we even started the pictures because it's like, you kind of I No, to. I intentionally wrote it down because I was, <laughs> or like explained it because I was like, I won't remember any of this once the episode's over. This right. was the one with the front. Oh, this was the, with the, this is the one I thought was so weird. It had the front in the back. Yeah. Yeah. And because because Christian came by and was like, what's different about that? I don't know what he said, but he made him want to flip it around. Yeah. I was like, I don't get it. But the judges were like, this is fantastic. The only <laughs> one I knew I loved was Kane's. 
Kane. And so we were nervous. I'm going to just be so candid. We were getting nervous when we saw the shadow of it. And we were like, oh God, me too. What, what's going on? And then when she dropped it and I was like, oh, we got, you know, a little bit of the, I mean, we'll go ahead and, you know, the Balenciaga glove look. And then we got the, the full thing. Cause I, I also was nervous with the fact that he really stuck with the original challenge, which was black and white. And it's interesting too, because I remember that dress. It wasn't the original dress. Wasn't that bad, but I mean, I, I'm glad he didn't get the horse hair. It flowed. I'm so glad he didn't get that horse hair. I think it, it, it could have gone Bishmi differently. Or Bishme. Is it Bishme? Hmm. Good question. I don't know. I say, um, I'm going to say, I say Bishme too, but I, and I hope that's correct. Um, yeah. he, I thought his look fantastic the hot pink mm-hmm. zip up hoodie with the fun sleeves and the back Loved. black pants i wanted them to give it to him i did i wanted them to give it to him only because of the what the challenge meant to him and the fact that they didn't exactly. give it to him means that they're not just doing what like story would suggest there they you gave go. they gave it to him because they gave it to kane cuz kane's was like a work of art it was it, it was beautiful. it was it was movement it was amazing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Bishmi's was fantastic, and I would totally Agreed. rock that zip up. Agreed. Absolutely. 100%. How could you do this to me? Question mark. I love snacks. I often fill up on snacks and don't have room for dinner. Who am I kidding? I always have room for dinner. But I need nuts and olives and popcorn and delicious things like that at all times. And that is why nuts.com has me covered. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there is something for literally everyone. And their nuts are notably different. I lived with my sister and brother-in-law, and they even stopped to ask me, like, where did what's where did you get this? I said, nuts.com. They said, these nuts are like notably better than any other nut I've ever tried. <laughs> but they don't just have nuts. The fact that they have specialty flowers makes sense, right? Nuts.com. It just it puts it all in one place right in front of me. I got everything I need. They have plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other really diet-friendly products. Whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or you just want to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you are bound to find something to try. You can shop a la carte anytime too, so you can opt into hassle-free auto deliveries so you never run out, or just pop in, grab a little, grab a little something. And if you're already stocked up at home, they also sell directly to businesses. Snack with satisfaction, knowing that quality is a top priority at nuts.com. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh. Since 1929, they've been doing it the old-fashioned way. One taste and you will know the difference. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash she speaks. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash she speaks. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash she speaks. I love that. Nora leaves and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That, yeah, that- you're good. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> go do yeah. go do your thing. You're successful. Go be successful. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Nora had such a great sense of humor, though. It was nice. She was like, I'll see you another 18 years, guys. <laughs> Maybe she'll have a mohawk again at that point. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Episode three, Unconventional mm-hmm. Materials Challenge. I don't yes. know how they ever come up with anything. This is just, it like blows my fucking mind. I mean, it, it makes my, I, I know we've said this, but it genuinely makes my brain melt. And that's what I was saying as I'm watching, all I could imagine coming up with would be, I would grab all the giant stuffed animals. And that's what Christian says immediately. He goes, do yeah. not. <laughs> I'd be like, well, can I rip He's up like, the carpet? I don't know. <laughs> we all know what you're doing. Don't do that. Um oh and so I got nervous when I saw Kane grabbing the pandas, pandas and doing the human centipede with those. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? I agree. And like it, I, 
I'm, I was blown away with the tiniest detail he added with spray painting the eyes was Which like frightened me at first chic too. as fuck. It made it work. I just, I, that's the thing about these designers is it's like those little details that to us, like I immediately was like, oh my God, they're, they're now, it's now a demon panda human centipede panda centipede and exactly. then i was like oh my god but it worked and it and same with it oh my god victor's so look. well <gasps> oh victor's <gasps> look loved incredible it's, i just loved it as soon as as soon as rami though was talking about his kite look i was like i know i'm not gonna like this i can just already tell because he has this like super deep connection to the kites i'm like but are you looking at these colors like I, it looks hideous. Like who it's said kites? primary colors? Yeah, kites. Kites aren't always the nicest, and you <laughs> picked the most basic kite colors that you could pick. Well, lame. And that's the thing too is like th- this challenge. I felt like they could have done one of two things. They could have either grabbed something that had the biggest surface area, which is something I would have to do, or they had to create their own textile, which exactly. is what is the hardest thing to do. And that's yeah. what Victor did. And yep. you know, um. Kane made a small portion of his, his own textile, but that's where like Rami relied completely on the kite and his draping skills. You can't drape a kite. It's not going to work the same. And it's the colors of the kite are hideous. Like, yeah. what are you doing? But as soon as he started going into like his deep connection, I thought, uh oh, I can tell where this is going. He's going to do this on the damn judges. You're going to do this on the runway, aren't you? And he it's did every week. He's going to do it always, every week. always. He always does it. It's so annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Christian goes up to Laurence, he's like, this looks amazing. And then he's like, wait, <laughs> what else is going to happen? Like, are we done? But she just doesn't get like, she doesn't give him anything in her, in the no. walkthrough. Like, he's like, did you play with toys? She's like, mm, I had 10 siblings, so we didn't really need toys. And they didn't last long in the house. <laughs> I was like, okay. And Christian keeps trying to like get more out of her, but she just doesn't play the game. And I have to say. I don't hate it because Christian no. does get a little full of himself when he goes around and is acting bitchy to everyone. Sure and I'm like, try that with Laurence and see what happens. Okay. It's, she it's won't hard. fucking deal with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because I do have this. Christian is innately likable. He really is. Yeah. It's And so I do like him as I'm agreeing with that. And I think you do too. It's that sometimes it's, I think he's, he doesn't fully pull back and get that bird's eye view of these people are stressed out, pouring their heart and soul into it. And yep. he forgets what that was like because <laughs> yeah. he was just a, a precious little emo boy back when this, when he was on, I mean, it was full on, you know, what I can't even think of like Hollister music, <laughs> hot topic totally. back then. So it's been a while for him. And, um, everyone responds differently. I mean, it is, Laurence is one of the most stoic people we've ever, like, ever seen. <laughs> ever. Like you can't pull anything out of her. No. I don't, I don't love it at all. However, when Nina said, this is kind of like how sometimes designers are, it's like, it's true. This isn't like yeah. that absurd in the fashion world. Um, Praje has a lot going on. He has a lot going on, but Christian signs off on it. And their dynamic is quite cute because he never, Praje never had a Tim Gunn. He only had Christian. So Mm -hmm. there's that bond there again. But it it was a lot going on. But this is an example of the the Tim Gunns and the Christians. They don't go through and they they don't want to like ruin anyone's creativity. They're just trying to guide it. There you go. And there was a prime example. Like Praje was doing everything, but he... Christian, from his perspective, Tim said it perfectly. Tim explained in a, in a in a reunion once. He's like, my job, because you guys don't get any break from your work. It's uncommon to design a whole thing in 24 hours because right. you need a chance to step back, look at it, think about it. Mm-hmm. And I come in as that. I come yes. in who's not attached to your project and I give you a little bit of perspective from over here because you're Mm -hmm. here you're looking at your design so close and you're panicking about getting it done and I can tell you like that looks crazy let's maybe (laughs) tone it back a little bit right and that is what Christian was like when Christian's able to look at all that crazy shit Praje's doing and go this still works it's gonna be a special piece you know it is Mm -hmm. mm-hmm absolutely you know and that's and that's such a great way to put it too and I almost look at it, maybe it's just because I'm a mom to a toddler as I'm saying this, but it's almost like guiding like children that Mm -hmm. are doing their art. They say, 
they as in parenting experts, whatever, say if your child's drawing on the wall, just guide them to paper and then clean up the wall. Don't start freaking out about the wall because you don't want to like hinder that creativity. And I do appreciate that, you know, it may not be Christian's taste and it may not have been Tim's taste, but it is uh, even just doing our podcast. Sometimes I, I am desperately needing someone to be not a mirror for me, but just to kind of go, okay, bounce off some stuff. Yes. It's like, you have to talk through things like as just human beings, but I don't know. Also designers, I imagine they can do the whole world in their head. I just, I know. Right. I, I reach that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next day of the workroom in the workroom, Hester, I, I like Hester. I think she's got really cool style. I think she designs badass things. And it's very important to have her voice on this show Agreed. because it's representing a lot of people that are usually underrepresented. In fashion, yeah. The thing that she does that gets on my nerves, though, is she throws shade at other people and acts like hers is the only way to do things. And I think that's where she's going to limit herself. She did that on her own season too. And I, it, I, I can tell it was it it was bothersome. Um, because you'd I only be like, vaguely remember her from her season. Yeah, I mean, listen, they they would kind of drop in and be like, oh, uh, is that really how you want to do that without being asked? And then when they would receive the cold shoulder, then they'd be like, oh, well, I mean, I'm just saying type of, it was just very like, no one asked you. And that's also where doing the, eventually the, the team challenge, I was interested to see how that was going to work for her, but they stick to their vision very tightly. That is no, there is no room outside of it. Yeah. It was such a combination. Oops. It was such a combination of both of them, their, their challenge, uh, Victor, no Fabio and Hester's. Mm -hmm. Um, but Hester, I don't (laughs) hate what she does, what he, they, fuck. Well, she she goes by she, they, so we'll, we'll, we'll oh, she between the two. Yes. So, oh, thank God. Cause I felt so, I wanted to apologize now for fucking. No, I was, I, I was supporting you by adding the they as well. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. That's what you're here for. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Keep me out of trouble. But they, um, they, they don't need to put anyone else down in order to shine. And if they could drop that part of their, process. Yeah. I think that they would have much more success period in general, because what it feels like they're doing is fighting for, um, Mm -hmm. like fighting to prove that they're underappreciated and that always gets you in trouble. (laughs) Exactly. Because then you end up overdoing it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's like, yes, go ahead, free the nipple. I don't go for it. You know, like it's fine, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that we're wearing pasties every single runway. I, I I don't know. I I like to see variation. It's not because I'm being prude and don't want someone to be showing their body that it's not about that. It's just sometimes show me a little more variation. They eventually it was shown. Yeah. Eventually it was a partnership, but I, I think I just would like to see more from Hester in the sense of what can you do aside from what I would consider a lot of festival wear. That's but very that's just festival wear. <laughs> it has festival wear vibes. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. Elevate it um, a little more. Because like I don't like when she throws shade at Brittany and Fabio. She's like for glue gunning. She's like, I think a truly unconventional look doesn't need a glue gun. I'm like, shut up. Really? Because I would I, do you think a chain mail belt is all that innovative <laughs> yeah i'm like be quiet throwing um, teddy bears at people off the runway that last night. i right i, I love I, I love i love when they have to go on a mission though for more materials and victor was like trying to get more boomerangs like that oh was God. his mission but then he had to eventually go to kato mm-hmm. and i loved this moment yep. where he realizes like here I am asking her for something like I need it like I need it and then he realizes like I should apologize for the way I acted on loved it on the on this season yeah and he's like I've really thought about it I love the growth I love her saying thank you it takes a lot to own up to that and then Kane I love Kane's like look at all this healing energy Who needs Jesus? We got everybody we need in here. (laughs) He wasn't even a part of the conversation, but he just like was clearly, I mean, they obviously are all listening to each other. No, I love it too. Um, Lawrence basically, Lawrence gives up. 
And she's like, I don't feel sad about it. She's like, it's simple math. I'm not going to have time to finish. I'm like, girl, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You don't care at all? Like, you don't even care? Never mind. I'm moving on. <laughs> no, I mean, like, what cracks me up about it is I also sometimes try to imagine how these designers were when they were in like elementary school and high school and yeah. they get projects. And like, you know, Laurence would be like, I don't know, the science project, doing the poster board and being like, yeah, this fucking sucks. I'm not doing it anymore. It's done. Yep. It's done. Give me an F. See if I care. <laughs> exactly. And like, I'll so, ace the test. So it's like, you can't really get mad at it. She's like, no. yeah, well, I'm like, it's effective. It's effective. <laughs> the final, the final touch from Kane with those pandas. So fab. <laughs> they get into hair and makeup. Bobby, Bobby Brown this time. Sometimes they've had the funniest makeup, like uh, makeup brand partnerships. Like Maybe they had Mary and- Kay. They had, um, they had something shitty one time. I don't remember what Cover it was. But, but then they also used to have um, the wall of like accessories. Right. And they, there was one time where it was JC Penny, and they had to keep pretending like JC Penny was like fashion. <laughs> like I just had enough money to support it. But he's like, please use your JC Penny wall. This is Tim Gunn, like right. intelligently or something. And I was like, what are we even saying right now? You know, I mean, be so grateful that you're using the purse that someone's Nana is wearing to church right now. And then like the JC Penny rep comes in because they always have to give them a moment and they're like, designers, you know, at JC Penny, we really oh, yeah. value fashion. It's very America's next top model. Like, yeah, you're like, this, this isn't a thing. We they, don't. Are we getting Coles next? It's really bad. So I'm glad that they got Bobby Brown. I'm like, yes, let's give it some like weight to it. Thank you. Some respect. Um, that was some nice makeup. <laughs> nice makeup. Totally. Uh, mm-hmm. They, I, I'm always amazed at how much they do right before the models are about to go on. Like they're yeah. still cutting. And I'm like, how do they even, how do they ever finish this? How do they ever get this done? But they will to the last second. It's just, it, the talent is unbelievable. Listen, sometimes it would be that way backstage at the pageant. <laughs> wow. Kane would be back there. And if you were one of Kane's girls, like he'd be like adjusting your boobs for you. And <laughs> it was like, you know, you didn't You don't even think you. about it, right? You're probably no, just like, go ahead, do it, whatever. Like, you get so desperate that for that perfect thing that you're like, <laughs> yeah. just touch me, do do whatever you got. Like backstage at anything is like madness. Oh. Nina as the host really cracks me up because she's so not enthused at all in her voice. Like she just, re- and then she just reads off, you know, whatever they, she's like, I've seen it all in the unconventional challenge. So you better <laughs> being your wow factor. Like, wow, Nina. Like, who decide? I get why, because she's been doing it for so long, but she's just got no enthusiasm whatsoever. It's very, um, what is it, Miranda Priestley. (laughs) It's, yeah, they're very, very much that. The guest judge is the CEO and founder of Alice and Olivia. So we have some some real talent this time. Yes. Makes more sense. Yeah, makes a lot more sense. (laughs) The, The runway... Elaine and Stacy love Victor's look. I like that. I don't know if they did this in past seasons, but I like that we're getting a little bit of judges commentary while the runway is yeah. happening because usually mm-hmm. we don't get any. And I like hearing just a touch of it. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice do too. to hear that. They, I remember they usually would have like their, I don't, at the mic, don't want to cover my face completely, but um, their little note card up and they'd really like uh-huh. hide it, hide behind it. You're right. I, I do like that commentary as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So the judging. How the fuck is Anna safe? Anna should not have been safe. What was that? Compare Anna's I mean, weird ruffle dress. Like, what the fuck did she make? What it was looked that? Like a tree stump. It was so like she had. She took what Christian said, which was make this a little more interesting, and was like, "Okay, Wait. I'll make something hideous." Wait, we have to talk about what she was going to originally do with it, though. Yeah. Yes. She was going to put a pacifier in the model's mouth. <laughs> Christian's <laughs> like, what? I I could uh, pull that back, bitch. Inter- <laughs> pull back. And he was like, I, I you could tell he was like, oh, I'm I'm not. I where's Tim Gunn? Someone bring yeah. me Tim Gunn. <laughs> She's like, why are you crying? What are you crying about? I'm not. No, we're not doing this. She's like, it's my baby. Like, what this is? model is not your baby, ma'am. This model putting is a not pacifier baby. in a model's mouth. It what? And it didn't, and it's not even like the the design at that. The design point. wasn't even along what? those lines. It didn't even make sense. I was like, "Ma'am, 
you need to go home be, and yeah. be with your baby if that is where you are at. Way, way too soon. And it you was can go, bizarre. You can go back to do a Project Runway normal season. You don't have to wait for All Stars. You can, like, we've seen it a million times. So, like, you didn't have to come back for this. You could have come back next season at the regular Project Runway. It's still, it's like a level of delusion that it's I'm so crazy. Kind of, I, I, she oh. should have not been safe. She should have been the bottom. That ruffle thing was ridiculous. What the fuck was that? I I would have rather seen her go home than Mila. Me too. Mila wanted Me too. to be there. And maybe Mila just ran out of time. Her. Like she could have done more. And and I could see where she was going with it. And I actually didn't Same. hate the design. Uh, same. She just needed more material and she needed mm-hmm. the time, just like you said. And it was just kind of like. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just looked like a, a tree stump with branches hanging down. It was so down. bad. I hated <laughs> it. Her, the first fave look, though, is Prajay's. Respect, loved, yes. absolutely obsessed with it. It was a mm-hmm. lot going on, but it worked. It was so well so done. Cool. Um, the second favorite look was Kane's. And I love Nina loving. I love the humor of the pandas. It gives me joy. Brandon's like, like, girl, her. what? <laughs> she's like it's so humorous I'm like you don't know what humor is girl oh, sick sense of humor that's what it is <laughs> she is so dark I love Nina she's uh-huh. so dark the first yep. bottom look is Mila fair 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 Absolutely. but Brandon says it just looks like you ran out of time and grabbed anything in the workroom and he's like yep. dead on mm-hmm. the next the next fucking bottom look is Rami this motherfucker gives the sob story it's a childhood memory so it's deep for me i would see them flying outside in the in the sky and i would see all of the colors and i loved the color i thought it was beautiful you love that color you loved that color rami listen rami that worked in season five it doesn't Mm -hmm. work on season what uh, 20 something or another that's Mm -hmm. me Stacy, Stacy just goes, Stacy's the guest. Star. She just goes, yeah. mm-hmm, I love the concept, but it wasn't executed right. And he had a plus size model. Like he didn't even, he knows how to drape. Like he, yes. It, and it's like, these are plus size models that are literally built like Coke bottles. Like you can't, to make them look like disproportionate the way he yeah. did. I was like, you had to try to not make her look gorgeous. What is, and Brandy goes, do you like this look? <laughs> and he's like, I do. I'm like, well, Stand that's a problem. It. Okay. <laughs> the next high score is Brittany's. And it, she's so relieved. And it was fabulous. Nina is impressed with her ruching te- technique, whatever the fuck that means. I don't know what things mean anymore. Uh, but I thought it was really cute. It was really, really I did cute. Too. I thought it what was is, cute. What is ruching? So it's like gathering. Um a, a one way to um, describe ruching would be like, um, you know, those bikinis that sometimes scrunch up in the back. Oh, yes, it's a little ruched, um, but oh, also well ruching. Done. Yeah, ruching is like just kind of like gathering the fabric and just scrunching it. Is that God, so you're you're good to have here because I don't know any <laughs> any of the any of the technical terms. You're good to have here. Don't ask me about grommeting. I I understand it slightly, but um, yeah, but no. Mm-hmm. Final highest score is Victor's and. It's the boomerangs. None of the, I love it. None of them. They were like, it's boomerangs. I love wow. that. They were like, we could not figure out what it was. So and cool. I love when they say, like Nina goes, it's beautiful. I just hope you know that it's flawless. Like that always will choke me up. Cause it's like, when you get those sorts of notes, it's like, thank you. Cause she doesn't give those out for free, honey. <laughs> no. Laurence, when her, this is, this is Laurence explaining what's in her. She's like, I use some boomerangs for some grommets um this part is a part of a piano some wooden pizza from pizza box and then she's it they're like and nina i love nina she's like listen girl i'll let you be an asshole i'll let you be kind of a bitch but right what i want to know from you is why not try and laurence goes no i did try and nina goes but did you i don't know <laughs> yes because that's Laurence, the way you ask <laughs> laurence is like She's used to probably out cold staring someone, but Nina's like, I mastered the cold stare decades ago, honey. Before so you were born. <laughs> you can't, you can't. And then Laurence goes, whimsical is not really part of my vocabulary. And Nina goes, why did you come back to Project Runway? Good question. And that was the right question. Why, because we get it. Not every, it's not everybody's style to use toys. Right. 
but this is why you're here. To do challenging things that the general public can't wrap their mind around. Exactly. To just like a TV show, honey. Yeah. And you know, like the average baker, yes, they're not classically trained bakers, but like they're on the great British baking show. You go on there because you know, you're going to get some ridiculous stuff. You're not going on there to just make a wedding cake. Exactly. Because anyone can do that. That's not a show. Exactly. There's no drama there. And Brandon goes, what would you say the story of this look is for you? (laughs) And Laurence is all irritated. She's like, I didn't really have a story. (laughs) Elaine goes, okay, as someone who's getting to know you for the first time, I would love to have your work tell me something about you. Even if the challenge doesn't take, even if the challenge takes beside your comfort zone. And Nina goes, this was surprising. And Laurence just goes, okay. (laughs) Girl. The I level mean, of unbothered. I can't. Like, how do you do that? It's so impressive. But also rude. It's a shield is what it comes it's down to. It's a shield. To. Absolutely. No one is more guarded than her. No one has more boundaries and blocks up than her. And I bet um, she's, I bet no one's more sensitive than she is at the end of the day. Because deep I think down. She's, yeah, I think she's been She's had a life. Times. She's had mm-hmm. a real crazy life. Like, I, I know I a bit it. of it. And it was like, mm. her and her friend, the one I worked with, I was like, you guys have, never mind. Like, when you think <laughs> you've struggled, forget it. Just kidding. Right. Like, they've been through a lot, the two of them. So, got it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Nina was, like, cheeky during this deliberation with Brandon. Nina's like, yeah. I mean, I loved Kane's look. I loved the pandas, but I have another favorite. And Brandon goes, honey, you sold me on that outfit with the pandas. Like, what, <laughs> right. what are you doing now? <laughs> Changing her mind. <laughs> Changing her mind. But the winner is going to be between people who didn't use a glue gun. So, hey, maybe Hester was on to something. Which, I mean, I would absolutely, a uh, glue gun, I think they need to stop knocking the glue gun when they've done if the majority of it is. Yeah, if the majority know. is glue gun, I get it. And I guess that takes it out of the unconventional challenge vibe. But right. the winner is Victor, and it should have been Victor. Uh, he did such an incredible job on that jacket. Um, Mila goes home, and honestly, Laurence yeah. technically should have gone home. I agree. I agree. You know, I hate yeah. to say it. Should have gone home. Mm-hmm. All right. Next challenge. Challenge is the royalty gown. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. I really love that they showed a picture of Beyonce in the examples <laughs> of royalty, though. Like, as soon as that That's happened, Kate I was like, okay. <laughs> I just like, Kate Middleton, Meghan Markle, Beyonce. <laughs> I was like, fair, I, <laughs> fair. And, yeah, I mean, she is. She is queen. Um, Yeah, I, it was a this challenge. Gosh, it was. It, yeah, it was interesting. It. Because I think it, the way they make these challenges, it's like they either give them not enough room to, yep. to go crazy or they give them so much room to run mm-hmm. wild. And this is one of those where they, yeah. Um, <laughs> Anna and Brittany have tension right away. And uh, Anna's rude. I'm sorry. She starts telling Brittany, she's like, maybe you could sew this and sew this. I'm like, excuse me? You no. Know. No, exactly. And I think Brittany handled her as nicely and politely as she mm-hmm. possibly could. Um, their backstory was completely unnecessary. Um, yeah. It was like, please stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Just when you have saying, to over explain it that much. It's not good. No, you. And that's that's the way it is every single time when they get to the runway. If the story is crazy, it's makes sense. Not good. Not exactly. Good. Exactly. <laughs> This is when they this is when they go for drinks and Kato and Rami point out mm-hmm. the difference between and how Christian and the judges treat the newer season contestants versus the older ones. And it's it's true. They pointed out yeah. that like you I'm, they probably wanted to be like, Anna should have been the fucking bottom for that nasty ass brown dress she did with the weird I don't even know what the hell that was. I can't get over it. Yeah. It looked like um uh what's the like banner, like like string yes. that you use to, to decorate streamers. Thank you. Yep thrown on top of that like you whenever you would like i don't know when we were in like elementary school and you'd like fold them up and then let yes. it be a slinky mm-hmm. that's what that mm-hmm. as a whole yeah it was gone. it was gone get out terrible. of there <laughs> get out of there um the runway the guest judge is that guy from carolina carolina herrera right <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. the and creative he was director savage 
Yes. Um, you could tell he was going to be as well. Um, mm -hmm. he, the way he just was sitting, he was like, I'm not going to like any of this. And his face did not move, honey. He went and saw his injector two yep. weeks prior. Yep. Did not so, move. This is that. Said I am giving 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm cracking up at Anna and Brittany both being proud of their work. They're like, we are watching this and we're like, this looks so good. I'm like, well, no, Brittany's proud of her work, but she also says, I'm just hoping to be safe. She knows. She's exactly. like, I'm not trying to win. Anna is like, this could win. I'm like, girl. It, it, it looked, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Same, but. same. But it looked so ill-fitted. It looked That's like it, right there. it didn't fit her at all. It needed so much tailoring. This model is this wide, okay? Yeah. And they made her look this wide. You Again, it's another scenario where you had to have tried for that. Yes. Like you couldn't even safety pin the back to gather it some. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> no, come I on. Agree. I mean, I'm talking about how I would Jimmy rig things. But yeah, um, I can't, <sighs> I can't even Victor though. Oh, okay. I'm mad at Victor. I'm so <laughs> mad at Victor. Kane was being a good team player. And mm -hmm. he was like, I don't want to kill his dream. God. But why are you insisting that we use this clear costume I, as a part of this? It looks so gorgeous without it. Like yeah. the way Kane designed that dress was so yes. sexy. He knows how to do that. And that it was a beautiful dress. And even, I don't know, it's almost like even if the dress itself had been like a, a silvery metallic material, like color, it would have been at least a little bit better, but it was like, no, the purple with silver leather. Like I, mm. it looked like armor. It looked like you were trying to make intentionally a costume for game of Thrones. Yes. Yes, it did. And it, it was like, I'm, I was relieved when Kane took it off on the runway because I was like, thank oh, God. Oh, thank God. Cause it's gorgeous. Yes. Please don't, please don't hang yourself with that. I, you know, I, I think that's the problem. Like Victor and Hester kind of are, can be a little bit two sides of the same coin where it's like, they are like, this is my aesthetic. This is my vision. I have yep. no other. Yeah. I mean, he's a bit the same way too. There's yep. not a flexible thing going there. And that's the thing. If you're going to be a successful designer, yes, you should have an aesthetic, but you need to have some flexibility. If you don't, you're not going to be able to ebb and flow with trends. You're not going to be able to create trends because your trend will be over. Like your style aesthetic is going to be over immediately. You totally. have to have some different points of view. Sometimes, you know, go, go to the Getty, go to a museum, <laughs> go to the Ooh, Met, yeah. go, Go view something to get more inspiration is just what I would like to see. Like people like those designers do. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's sad is that Victor just won. Two. I didn't think he should have gone home. I didn't. I th and I, I, I was like, chance. Anna, sh like how? But this, I'm telling you, they are favoring the newer people and right. they are. I mean, it's really re that was the most apparent in this one. I loved Fabio and Heather's gray vibe. I did. I thought so cool. I loved the design. I thought it was fabulous. So I understood cool. the note on the fabric choice in that it didn't Color. necessarily seem royal. Mm. Like if they had done a cool plaid look in maybe like a purple or, purple or a blue yeah. or something for yes. sure. But I thought it was so hot and sexy and gorgeous and I fabulous. And I loved it. Loved the marrying of both of their styles together. They it could like so easily do like a line, like a, like a special piece Would together. She gave exactly what I was saying that I needed from them, which is a different point of view. I think if they would just get Hester to go, go a different route, look at things from that different point of view and being teamed up that way. It was, it was fantastic. Fantastic. That, that's why it's like, go, go get some different culture in, in your life, in your body. Even, you know, you and I both came from the world of acting and mm -hmm. that's something you would go do. You go try and experience things. Yeah. And it's like, because you can't go play a different person that is complete opposite from you. If you don't know what a different point of view is like, and that's, mm -hmm. I, it goes anything with art, I think is that way. Have you watched the bear on Hulu? No, but I need to, I keep hearing it's wonderful. So I, I, I couldn't watch it until literally 
this past week because I was so triggered by having worked in restaurants, opened restaurants, like it was just too soon. So now I'm three years removed and I'm like, I will watch this. And I'm, it's like my entire personality yet. <laughs> so far, I've, I've watched it through because I watch things in the background, which is so bad. Like I do the it's same. such a disservice to the, to the art. I feel so bad for them. How dare you? <laughs> How dare I? Because I miss so much. And then I'm like, I actually don't know what they're talking about, but I get the vibe. I've watched it through twice because I know I've missed things. It's oh, yeah. that good. It's that fantastic. But it's exactly what they do in, in for, for chefs. They say, go eat places. Go to food mm-hmm. trucks. Go anywhere that inspires you because when you've been in a kitchen trying to make a menu for too long and you you haven't pulled away from it, you forget why you like cooking. Mm-hmm. And so he sends her, he sends her – his Sue, he sends her just go and eat places. And he yeah. sends her to all of the places he's worked in before or he knows people. And it's like the best of the best food trucks, whatever makes her excited. And then now the menu comes together. It's true. You've got to go out and live life. You can't create just inside in your no, world. You can't it's be true. in a hole. It's so true. Praje and Kato's was literal perfection to me. That So this is what's so funny. Uh, I remember – Again, I was watching this with my mom and we both were like, how could she, she brought a fabric from home. I completely forgot For, they could yep. bring fabric from home. I, I don't know where I missed it. Even in, when Kirasan brought her fabric, completely forgotten. So I was like, that, that fabric was oh stunning. And they, I mean, them using it. The way this, they used it was so perfect too, because you could easily use that incorrectly. Absolutely. The colors, the it was so rich. Like I have no business wearing that cape, but honey, I want to now just let me go walk down the hallways of Ugh. a mansion in it or something. Like, let it me go down a winding staircase. Utterly stunning. Beautiful. Utterly. I like, it took my breath away and they, mm-hmm. it, they deserved, they deserved the win. I loved Rami and Bishmi. Yes, it was a little simple but I loved how Bishmi did like his normal sexy thing and then Rami added his drapery that like yes. they both together created such a sexy gorgeous gown that at was modern was me too because that fabric it looked mother of the bride at first it looked mother of the bride it absolutely did I was like uh oh we are yeah. going home again but no no I thought the final product and I agree that they the fabric maybe wasn't the right choice however Oh, I would see a royal wearing that in a heartbeat to a red Absolutely. Carpet. Absolutely. You know what's funny? I thought it was navy until they said it was black. Oh. I don't know why. I'm, and I yep. can see color in a different way, typically just from my uh, background and careers I've had. And I was like, what the, something about it, the sheen of that fabric, it was, it was beautiful. It, it took loved. on a different hue. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, no one, no one is safe. No one gets to be safe. So that freaks everyone out because the judging is the judges judge everybody at once. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, they think Bishmi and Rami's was the most chic, but again, that that embroidery it did it took it to a pageant place. The embroidery did it took it to a bit yep. of a pageant kind of vibe. I agree. Um, but honestly, the I was right there with Brandon when he was like the styling though with this ponytail to end yes. all ponytails. And they were I had so correct that. to do that. I said that right before. I was like, it's the styling that yes. saved them. Because they could have easily fucked that up with like an updo, like one of those like cheesy updos or something. That would have totally ruined it. But it's the no. chic ponytail. Yes. It was oh, everything. So everything. Mm-hmm. Brittany and Anna's comes out and I, I think it was I think it was the guest judge. He goes, It feels wilted, sad, and heavy. <laughs> <laughs> It did. It was <laughs> ill fitting. Like a gathering of the tool brings everything down. Like it just was so bad. I'm sorry. Si- I'm not side noting too much, but did you, was there a part of you that expected him to like, I don't know, have some sort of a German accent or, or a yes, Swedish and very sad, wilted and heavy. And yes, he, he was, was slightly so intense. <laughs> He was Um, heartless. You could tell he was Nina's friend because when Nina goes, my good friend, I'm like, oh, this guy's going to be an asshole. Can you imagine having dinner with the two of them? Absolutely. Oh, 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 no, thank you. (laughs) No, thank you. So here's here's one that I didn't get. Laurence and Carasons got this high note. And I was like, oh, I don't know what it is. I just sort of thought this didn't totally. 
look pinhead. good. Like, who's wearing this? It. <laughs> but I was. I have no fashion, so. No, here's the thing. Um. Okay. It. I loathed it <laughs> until. I think it was Nina that said, was this an homage to Carl Lagerfeld? Lagerfeld? Okay, then I saw it. But if that, I don't think it was intended to be. If it was, they needed to over-accessorize it with some pearls and get some of that going. Give her more rings. Give her some more bracelets. Um, I, there was, they, I, I liked that the belt, the teensy belt tied it in slightly. It didn't tie it in enough for me. Um, and it was a yeah. little bit like a French poodle walking down the runway. It looked like she couldn't really walk in it either. No. That it was is- my other thing. Is I was like, she can barely walk. The model can barely walk. But I think I the tears needed to build yeah, yes. up. They needed to get bigger. Yes. You know, and so, like instead of being the same size. Does that make I sense? I wonder sometimes if things translate different on camera versus in mm-hmm. person. I think that's, that's got to happen, point. you know? Because yeah. sometimes I'm like, do I just not get it? Because I usually agree with for the mo- well that's not true what me half the time I don't have fashion so I'm like when something I think is bad they're like loved it I'm like oh maybe I don't know well no you have the fashion sense to know like uh, the general view of something being pretty and the way something aesthetically comes together I you and I are able to see that sometimes we can't see something that is maybe so forward that we're not going to be seeing it on runways for another two years, you know, like that, my brain doesn't work that way. I wish it did. Um, but it doesn't. It's true. So it's you, it's, you can see like the structure of how things are supposed to be like the one, two, three of the shoulder into the waist type of thing. And that's where they were going with it. But I, again, I felt like the ruffles needed to build in volume or in length as it went down, if that makes sense, because it, it just, it was like, I don't know, like I said, like a poodle or like someone walking around with inner tubes around their yes, legs. I'm yes. I'm really weird. <laughs> that, no, that's how I, that's kind of what I thought too. That's perfectly yeah. explained. So mm-hmm. I thought they would be not safe, but they were top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. I was. So surprised. Um, I didn't realize that Hester and Fabio's look was actually three pieces until they took it off and they made some great pants. Yeah. Absolutely. Great pants. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, Kato and Praje, they love, 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 as they yes. should. Except I didn't like the dumb guest judge being like, I don't think the cape and the dress go together. I'm like, you're crazy. It worked. You're it was crazy. very cultural. It was very cultural. And it was, it, I mean, it was a modern take on the culture as well. It, it was, was just so perfect. perfect. So you be quiet, you stupid, grumpy man. Okay. Yes. Get out of here. It was so perfect. Go get another microderm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so deliberations, the bottoms, Victor and Kane, Brittany and Anna. And I, I'm like, if they fucking send Victor home, I'm going to be pissed. And then they the did. Same. I cannot believe, I'm shocked. It didn't and make they didn't sense. Even, he just won. And they cut straight to it. Victor. And you <gasps> that know, was like, so first, fucked up. They usually do like yes. the Victor, you're in. So and so you're in. But they just went, Victor, you're out. They were just fucking with them. I don't like it. It made me very like mad. Anna should have gone home. Yep. Ugh, said I'm what so we said. pissed about that. Like that was not fair. He just won, you guys. I I and I understand they're supposed to be judging on just that week. Okay. I get it, but that's not humans. Don't work that way. No, we just don't. We don't. It's so not fair. It's a competition. You have to start taking everything into consideration. Oh, I I was so upset for Victor. I was so upset too. I didn't think he deserved to go home. I think he deserved another chance. I felt like he was still, I feel like going back to a show like this, you need to get your sea legs a little bit. And he was, he, so he stumbled for a second, okay? Like, and team challenges are hard, you know? So hard. And Anna he, and he, couldn't even sew her thing. I'm so I mad. mean, didn't she hot glue it? She didn't she it? hot glue it? It was a mess. It was a d- like mess that? for fit. So something I do miss them doing um, that they did when Tim Gunn was still on and Heidi. By the way, also Heidi was another national treasure. Heidi was so fantastic and gorgeous mm-hmm. and stunning. And I loved her so much. Yeah. But they used to, 
bring out the models with their designs on when mm-hmm. they would have the deliberations. Yep. And I loved that because then I they agree. got to get really close to it and really touch it and be, don't get me wrong. Zach Posen was a little handsy with the models, like without double checking for a sec. Yeah. As much as I didn't like Zach Posen all the time, because he seemed like a little snarky asshole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So was Michael Kors. So I kind of, you know, like, it's like, mm-hmm. you just kind of have that judge, yeah. I guess, because Zach Posen almost seemed to like enjoy being mean to them. But then I think he got enough fan feedback because then a season happens where he kind of like stops being a dick. Chilled out. Yeah. Uh, but I like when they see the designs up close and can Agreed. judge further with that. I wish they'd bring that back. I, because my I think guess, that's what's fair. <laughs> my guess though is that it was problematic because then they were literally just like touching these models, sticking their hands up the dresses. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's why. I'm guessing when they did the re- the the renaissance of the show because they had to get rid of Weinstein. That was such mm-hmm. a, that was so sad. I, I didn't know that that was a Weinstein production. I didn't know the original project. <gasps> that's why they that had either. to. That's why they had to revamp it. Oh my god! And I did not know that. That's yeah. I was like, wait, what? Oh, why are we doing makes... a different project runway? Because oh. Weinstein, it was a Harvey Weinstein production. His, his his wife's gowns. I used to love them too. I just forgot the name of it. Um, Mer- it started with an M. Um, I thought, oh, I can't. It's out of my brain. Um, wow. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of things make more sense, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So they're probably being much more cautious and careful with everything nowadays. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Rightfully so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understood now. Yeah, because everyone's so much more gentle, aside from guest judges occasionally. Um, yeah, I know, right? Guest judges like to get savage sometimes. I mean, take your 15 and run. I get it. Yeah. Do no, it. yeah. So that's why that's why they've had to redo it. But anyway, I prefer when they brought those models back out back out because I like watching the way they break things down, especially when it's bad. That's my other favorite is when something there was a couple there were a couple seasons in there where there was like two that stick out. I can't remember what the numbers the n- number of the season was, but they would send people were sending things down so incomplete. Yep. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, it would they be would, like strings hanging yes. and like they you wouldn't even see finish the, off. Yeah. You would see mm-hmm. like them, the sewing literally halfway done. So yep. that was fun when they'd be like, look at this. It's like falling yeah. apart. That was like, she, she doesn't even have a hem. <laughs> yeah. She's like, it was so, like some of that was so, so bad. Like you had to like send the person home. Yeah. Um, but overall, really love this season. I think Agreed. they brought back some great powerhouses. Love this show. Love mm-hmm. that you know so much about fashion, Caitlin. I mean, I, I should start saying I know nothing so that people don't expect me True. to show up. Under promise, over deliver. Always, That's honey. <laughs> the hospitality 101. I learned that a long time ago. Always <laughs> under promise. That way they're impressed. Never over promise and you're screwed. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me on thank this for, Saturday. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And we'll have to do this again. I know. I feel like maybe you should definitely be like my go-to Project Runway person. Happy to. It's Happy so nice. Uh-huh. Um, okay, guys. Oh, by the way, guys, someone submitted a nickname suggestion. Because I've been having such a hard time coming up. You know, everyone call. I'm sure you call your listeners Besties, things. Yeah. I don't. I I, I don't have anything because I'm She Speaks Bravo. And I'm like, mm. someone came up with Shishis. <laughs> I I, that's really I actually cute. like that. I do too. I like that. Yes. Because for a while I was saying stay messes, but I've completely forgot to say that because I say I'm a complete mess. And then, <laughs> but I'm like, I think she, she's is really fucking cute. But messes, like we can that. still be messes, guys. We are all still messes over here. But I think yeah. she, she's is adorable. I think it's very adorable. And it's like, it's on brand. It, I, <laughs> my vote is yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me let me know the let me know how we feel about this because I think it's yeah. adorbs. Um, but can you tell the people where they can find you, follow you, and all of that yeah. stuff? I am on every social media platform that you are already tired of, which is Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, I'm um, YouTube at 
every single one of them. It's Besties by Bravo, and you can listen on Apple, Spotify, quite literally anywhere you listen to a podcast. <laughs> I can be found. You She's run, there, babies. Yeah, and of course, I will be linking everything in the episode notes, guys, so you can check it out. Super easy down there. And thank you so much for listening, everybody. Love you, means it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there's the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.